Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And today's fave is this classic. This is a historical recording in lustrous mono. The three major Respighi tone poems, the Roman trilogy, as we call it, conducted by none other than Arturo Toscanini, who was a friend of the composer, who knew the composer, who premiered some of these suckers, who knew him better than anyone in the universe. And his recordings of them are astonishing. And they remain so. They are really the, still the benchmark by which all the others are measured. And they sound really, really good. These were the famous recording sessions where where the engineers who were, who were let's say, Richard Moore and Louis Layton, asked him to tone the orchestra down a little bit because he was going to blow up the machines. And he turned around and screamed at them, what do I care about your machines? The hell with your damn machines. Blow the suckers up. I don't care. You know, something like that. And it really tells because these are the most exciting and overwhelming performances yet recorded. They still are. And even in mono, you can really tell. You can tell that the orchestra is going completely Bat shit crazy. And frankly, if you want when you want to hear these tone poems, that is what you want to hear. It is absolutely what you want to hear. They are so much fun to do. I mean I've played these things before and I've told you the my my community orchestra Respighi story about, you know, the organ that wouldn't stop and you know, doing it with an orchestra that had, you know, two thirds of a cello and three violins and a complete complement of winds, brass and percussion. Oh wow, what fun it was. I mean, and these are beautiful works. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. Now, Roman festivals comes in for quite a bit of opprobrium because it is extremely loud. It really is. It's very, very noisy, but it's so tuneful. I mean, you know, who cares if it's loud? The tunes are wonderful. It's so much fun. And it, it's such a an extravagant use of just a ridiculously large orchestra. It, it, it's it's a clinic in orchestration all by itself. And, you know, one of the things, one of the things that we give no credit to these days, particularly, is is people who are just incredibly good at what they did and knew what they could do and did it superbly well. I mean, Respighi never pretended to be a major symphonist or a great philosopher or any of those things. He, he was a superb melodist and orchestrator and and he wrote music that really basically simply simply supported his gifts. And that's really a good thing. I mean, you know, no one... See, he, he wrote one symphony, the Sinfonia Dramatica, which is really a great deal of fun, but he never wrote another one, and it's really understandable why not. Because these pieces, these pieces allow him, the student of Rimsky-Korsakov, let us not forget, to display his love of gorgeous sounds and making beautiful sounds in that miracle, an absolute miracle, which is the modern symphony orchestra. And a lot of people sort of dog these Toscanini recordings because they aren't supposed to sound all that great. The truth is, most of them sound pretty good for their period. I mean, yes, some of the Studio 8H recordings, it was a very dry, you know, acoustic. But, you know, Toscanini's interpretations actually kind of benefit from that because you have that incredible rhythmic clarity. And it, it may not be what he sounded like live. I know people who saw him live and and who were at some of these sessions, and they tell me, no, the orchestra, the sound that he made from the orchestra was one of great warmth and richness, and it wasn't as, as sort of dry and and and, and leathery and, and just, you know, rhythm and nothing else, as some of these recordings, you know, seem to reflect. And I, I, I accept that. But I don't really miss it. I mean, I you know, for me, a recording never sounds like what anything sounds like live. Ever. The only question is whether or not the recording supports what the artist is doing. And I don't really care whether it sounds like, you know, what, what it sounded like live, because it's never going to. So why even worry about it? These were recorded in 1949 through 1953. And they are without a doubt some of the best sounding recordings made in that period by anybody for any reason. No one need be ashamed or hesitate for a moment, a second, 
in acquiring this disc and listening to these interpretations and enjoying them for for all of their unbelievable intensity and supreme musical values. And they're the kind of performances that that elevate the music. He doesn't, Tuscany doesn't play this like trashy music. He plays it like it's the greatest music in the world. And that's really the difference between, you know, uh, uh, the perception of Respighi's music. You know, when it's when it's given a lackaday, lackadaisical performance, a, a, a not top-notch performance, it doesn't sound like top-notch music. When everybody plays as though their lives depend on it, it sounds like fabulous music. Big surprise. There are not many works that sound like fabulous music when played poorly. Let's face it, right? I mean, you know, practically speaking. So here we have it, a, an absolutely essential disc, a historical landmark, an amazing, amazing, amazing record, and one of Toscanini's greatest, and, and something that no one need ever be ashamed to mention or claim or, or be embarrassed because they love it as much as I do. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.